Welcome to Roundhouse Roulette, a Walker, Texas Ranger podcast. Thanks for joining us as we recap and review one of the 200 existing Walker, Texas Ranger episodes, randomly selected by Roundhouse Roulette. I'm Evan Dalton, here with my brother Adam. What's going on? And fellow child of hope, Mr. Bob Leahy. I have hope. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, good. Thank you for joining us for an extra special edition of this in that we are all sitting relatively face-to-face, although we've all got computers in front of us and microphones. That's how we don't have to look at each other, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right, no. right. I prefer Zoom. Yeah, maybe we can just yeah. log Sorry. into Zoom. Yeah. I prefer our online conferencing software. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, not sponsored by Zoom yet. Sorry, strike that from the record. We use Skype. Either way, that smells better than this does. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, this room's going to be pretty ripe. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thanks a lot for joining us as we discuss the finer points of diaper changes. Of course, that means we'll be recapping and reviewing Season 9, Episode 9, Child of Hope, where Walker and Alex get to practice playing house with an infant abandoned by a murder witness. Before we roll up our sleeves and begin assembling the 400 pieces of this IKEA crib, join us as we pull up a seat at CD's Bar and Grill. (laughs) CD's got a real, real barn burner for us this time around. Yeah, no, uh, CD. He uh, he went to our hometown to uh, stock his Texas bar. That's a local touch. Yeah, so CD has procured from Forty Second Brew Co. in Kingston, Massachusetts, shipwrecked New England India Pale Ale. That sounds crispy. Yeah, what's the menu say there, Evan? Mm, okay, it says the New England IPA comes with a dose of. We're going to call it Yukonuba and Citra. Oh, okay. <laughs> Used in Whirlpool and again in Dry Hop. They brew this in a Whirlpool? It's probably part of the brewing process. Oh. We just don't know about. Okay. Keep going. It's a cloudy IPA yielding a fresh citrusy welcome on your first sip with a subtle underlying bittery smooth finish. I guess like if you're shipwrecked, it's kind of a bitter situation, but if you have beer... It could be fun. Could be worse. Yeah, it could be a lot worse, (laughs) right? Okay, let's try this. (laughs) And it's my understanding this brewery also uh, got its start during the pandemic, just like this podcast. So shout out to 40 Second Brew Co. Evan, what are you pouring that into? What is that? This is a, uh, a chalice. A chalice. Okay. This was part of a giveaway in the early 2000s uh, related to the Fellowship of the Ring. This was back when Burger King was on point. Giving away glass. Yeah. A molded glass chalice with Gandalf on it. Okay. It also has a built-in coaster underneath that lights up. Yeah. We don't have glasses, Evan. You're you're, you're usurping us with a a Gandalf chalice? I don't know how we're going to be able to enjoy this beer. It's just one beer to rule them all right now. Okay. Uh, this is a citrusy welcome indeed. Oh, yeah. I dig it. Yeah. Okay. We may have to walk over there from here afterwards. Shipwrecked uh, CD, you've done well. Uh, shout out to 42nd Brew Co. in Kingston, Mass. Check them out. Is uh, 42nd, is that talking about, we talking about Latitude here or what? Yeah, it's the 42nd Parallel. Really? Which runs through Kingston, Massachusetts. And you know that there's nothing going on in your town when that's your claim to fame. Yeah. That and uh, LFO. What was their hit? Uh, the Abercrombie and Fitch. Oh, I like girls who wear Abercrombie yeah. and Fitch. Yeah. You know that song, Bob? No, I don't. Yeah. Oh, you're and, better for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Based on the words, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty happy and, about I don't it. know why I didn't and the band, on that. And uh, the band Mother Anonymous as well. They oh, came out. I've heard of them. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I have, I've heard they're terrible. So you could check them out on GeoCities, <laughs> but I think their site's down. Yeah. Web archive. Yeah. They, they only played... <laughs> uh, played birthday parties and graduations that was there that's i hear what their their tour dates look like actually Gro- grocery store openings you're parades. actually wearing a mother anonymous t-shirt evan let's let's check out the tour dates on the back of this t-shirt <laughs> oh read them off read them off <laughs> all right we've got kevin lanza's graduation party okay knights of columbus hall number 2911 <laughs> we've got kingston hannaford supermarket that, oh, that's when we, uh, oh, not not us, that's when they played in front of the grocery store and scared uh, people when they were coming in. This is a great year for this band. <laughs> some, some pivotal shows. Right, and, sounds like it. And then the annual Kingston Woodstock Festival to cap it off there. So four whole dates on that tour. Wow. Each one a barn burner. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. Wow. All right. Well, that's vintage there. <laughs> okay. So there's a little bit of Kingston history, and we're tasting it right now, too. I love that. We're bringing it all together. Now, Bob and I, uh, last week, Evan, you weren't able to go, but we went into Boston, and we met our buddy, uh, Corey, and he recommended, what was this bar we went to? Public House. I guess it was Irish pubby kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. They had no wine, no pitchers of beer, and no mixed drinks, right? No, sh- no shots. Uh, they might have had mixed drinks, but they didn't do shots. So they were like strictly, uh, you know, elitist beer place, yeah. right? And what was on the menu? But the beer we're drinking right now. So Wow. Question for you. Did they have um, it's a brewery in New Orleans called is it Abida? Abida. Yeah. Did they have Purple Haze? Because any place that like tries to take itself too seriously, that's like on tap. I don't think I saw that, but yeah. uh, I don't know. anyways, you can edit that out. <laughs> I'm good. Well, well keep Bob in mind I, if you say edit that out, totally stand it. Stand yeah, it, all right. Cool. So yeah, we we know a ton about beer on this podcast, but we went to go see uh, Corey Henry in Boston. And if you haven't checked this guy out, he's a ridiculous keyboard player, singer. I mean, he was like Stevie Wonder and uh, Herbie Hancock and parliament funkadelic almost all those things combined right yeah great stage presence oh yeah great dance moves he came out drinking a thing of tea very chill and he goes guys we're gonna dance tonight feel free to just be you and he's just like drinking tea out of a cup and he sets it on top of his b3 and just chillfully starts doing this like kind of gospel organ thing and the band gets in there by the end of the night it's gangbusters yeah so highly recommend yeah highly recommend Corey henry go check him out all right well there's not a lot of news going on but i did see um that there was a behind the scenes interview with chuck norris it looks like this was done on the set of walker in 1993 it's a short little interview so i thought we'll just play it here get it into the the record and uh you can hear our commentary on it i'm sure we'll have a ton of commentary I've done so many fight scenes, you know, and, you know, of course, that's where my expertise really lies, is uh, <laughs> in my uh, fighting ability. Nice. <laughs> in my life, I've been in karate, uh, taekwondo, karate, you know, kung fu, you know, which is all kicking and punching, blocking type of, a, of a art. And uh, now more into the grappling concepts. Grappling. You know, the, the on the ground type Judo. concepts. Marker. Clear. And action. <laughs> it's the philosophy that my that looks like it's Mike hanging down. I mean, that looks like it's from a pilot. You know, yeah. They're uh, honorable type characters that are put into situations that they have to deal with. Many times on a was that Busey? That kind of looked like Gary Busey, but that to, didn't happen in '93. Too, and I think that's the difference. Yeah. <laughs> if you you go out there and you put into position that you can't get out of, the analogy is if you're walking down the street and all of a sudden three thugs start accost you, you know you would love to be able to handle the situation if you can't get away from it, and we all do. We all do. We all get away from it? Uh, we all handle it? We want to be able to handle it, that's what he's saying. I, yeah, I want to be Chuck Norris. Then when I went to Korea when I was in the military, I started training in the martial arts. One was to raise my self-esteem, but secondly, to prepare myself because I was going into police work when I got out of the service. So I wanted to prepare myself physically for the for my profession. But it's always a, really a dual purpose. So I've tried to put a lot of Chuck Norris into my characters, and Walker is a lot of me. After I kill you, Walker, I'll be the legend. Only in your mind. Oh, I'd been offered a lot of barrels. series in the past, and uh, I turned them all down, never ex- really thinking that I would do a television series. But when this project came to me about a Texas Ranger, it was the kind of character that I thought I would enjoy playing week after week, because <laughs> if it's successful, then of course you're living with this character for a long time. So it's important that it's someone that you're interested in playing. I think the Walker character that I would be playing is a character that I would enjoy playing. And a long time. Oh, oh, oh. Lawn, lawn ponytail. Get him. 
Kenneth Walker. You know, Walker himself is a strong believer in law enforcement. Okay. Uh, you know, the Checks type of out. guy yeah. who... Uh, That's about it. He's very <laughs> strong in his beliefs. Okay. That's about it. At the same time, there's that vulnerable side to him. No. Nope. And his vulnerability <laughs> nope. really lies in his friendships. No but, vulnerability. You're going to see a, a certain side of... Uh, of Chuck Norris that hasn't been seen. You have the right to remain silent. And you have the right to stuff it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, well, well, thank you to the E.T. Vault for that one. Wow. There, uh, we'll, we'll post that up on our episode page if you guys want to watch that little nugget. Well, uh, we would like to send out some thank yous to folks who have helped us here at the podcast. Um, Celicia. Thank you so much for for picking up that action figure. And uh, not to be outdone, friend and guest of the pod, Mignon Monroe, a script supervisor for almost every single Walker episode, uh, picked up a mug and some action figures from us to help support the pod. Uh, We started this last podcast. We're going to have a call to action every podcast from here on out because I'm not going to say what might have happened since the last podcast, but you guys did a lot of good work. Uh, but with the call to action and um, I don't want to spoil it by saying what's happening, but things are in the works based on that. That's all I'll say. And uh, thank you roundhouse nation for making this happen and stay tuned. Wow. That was a pro level tease right there. Definitely stay tuned. Okay. Something may or may not be in the works. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially maybe. All right. So call to action this time guys. If you want us to try to get more guests, try to do more ridiculous stuff, uh, it really helps us out if you write a review on Apple Podcasts, if you haven't already. And the last one we have is from last year. We don't have one for 2024. We got about one a year, right? Didn't we figure that out? Exactly. <laughs> you know, and so, but what's, yeah. that, what's that overall rating? Um, we actually do have five-star ratings. It's perfect, right? A perfect rating. And we don't care if you go in there and do one star and, and make fun of us. We just want some more well, content well, to talk about. Well, if you put a one star in, please justify. But the last one, it's from 2023. And this is what comes up when you check out the podcast. It says, Walker is the best ranger in the whole wide world. I mean, that's a review from our podcast? Sure. Not really a review of us, but... But we'll take it. You can write yeah. whatever you want in there. Oh, I had a chicken sandwich today. It was great. Best chicken sandwich ever. Five stars. <laughs> I went to Guy Fieri's restaurant with Disappointed. Five stars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was only okay. Five stars. <laughs> yeah. So, if he, it, it, you know, and that just helps us out and gets more people who are into uh, Walker, Texas Ranger to find the podcast and... uh uh, we appreciate you guys, everyone who's done that thus far and, and shared the podcast around. We got a lot to cover this time around. So uh, if you're watching at home and don't want some spoilers, phew, hit that pause button and watch yourself season nine, episode nine, Child of Hope, and come right on back to us if you dare. Welcome back. Let's dig into this beast. This episode originally aired on December 9th in the year 2000. In the year 2000. <laughs> And uh, it opens on a, a bit of a late night in the office, if you will. It does. And it, this is so weird. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what? It's immediately, I just thought, this is a weird office drama episode. Like, right. Yeah, like Walker is in his office somewhere else, and he calls Alex, and they're like, he's like, what's up, babe? And she's like, oh, I'm, I got to work a little late. And he's like, oh, well, I'm going to go home. She's like, oh, well, I got to work longer. It's already almost midnight. And she's like, oh, yeah, well, you go home, Walker, and I'm going to be working later into the wee hours, but I'll swing by the uh, grocery store at midnight to pick up some bacon to come home and cook you it after I've worked a long day. This was her proposition. She was like, why don't you go on home and, you know, if you, if you want to wait up for me, I'll stop by the store. I'll pick up some bacon and eggs and we have some midnight breakfast and then... If you're really feeling down for it, we can head on out to the porch and <laughs> maybe count the fireflies oh. if you catch my drift. Okay, yeah. I'm Cause... literally talking about counting fireflies <laughs> exactly, after cooking yeah. you food. <laughs> there is no, yeah, there's no, uh, no, no sex happens on this show, so that's all we can really do. Mm-hmm. I, I, maybe I'll be proven wrong in this TBD. episode. But yeah, yeah, TBD. We'll have to wait and see. At yeah. the same time, mm-hmm. you really want to like mow down on like midnight bacon strips and then make out? Come on. They're going to be counting fireflies, Adam. 
That is literally what they will be doing. There's no euphemism. There is none of that. Okay. She, All right. They're having midnight breakfast and counting fireflies. I mean, that's romantic. Hell yeah. You know, that might lead to something. Now, I mean, no. I, don't, <laughs> no. I don't, I mean, they could have midnight breakfast a little bit quicker if, say, Walker went to the grocery store and picked up the bacon and eggs. Well, he's the man. <laughs> he's the man. So, <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, maybe that's his kryptonite, the grocery store. He doesn't, you that's know, he's like, man, yeah. I, I get in the produce section. I, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he just cook. freaks out. Yeah. It's like eggs? I don't know. Like, uh, I mean, this was 1990, or this was the year 2000. So, right. you know, you probably didn't have too many options of eggs or whatever. Yeah, he's, he's like, like I don't know. Do I want the brown eggs or white eggs? Yeah, so I want he, large or extra large? What, what am Jean, I doing? Jimmy Dean Tastifuls. I mean, he probably picked some of those up. I like begging do i want like thick cut or like what, what am i doing here i don't know apple wood cherry wood what, what's going on yeah and and you think he doesn't always keep bacon and eggs in his fridge yeah he's got like a chest freezer for right. all that stuff yeah. he's probably a steak a day guy right at least one steak a day twice a day Ooh. we're talking steak and eggs for breakfast steak for dinner okay yeah. and maybe a steak sandwich for lunch oh yeah. that's good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No. anyways <laughs> uh so Midnight why, proposal. Why are no. we focusing on the episode, guys? <laughs> yep. Uh, so, <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's a little bit of romance, but, you know, I'm, I wrote in my notes, like, you know, what could go wrong? Because she said she was late working late on a homicide case, and I'm like, okay, so she's, like, going to have to go home. I felt, you know, late. I know, I'm like, yeah. she's going to get kidnapped. Right? That's, yeah, I was right with you. Oh, on you one. thought so, yeah. I, I, I just was kind of, like, by the vibe of it already, like, I have no idea what's happening here. So, mm-hmm. but what does happen? Well, you know, we cut to a. Uh, I think at this point we could describe it as a Walker Texas Ranger Mansion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Yep. Um, and we've got, we've got <laughs> a car. I don't know. Some sort of Chevy would be my guess. Sort of mid nineties model Chevy. Right. Uh, packed full with uh, adult males, which in an episode of Walker. They're criminals, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I think in real life they're probably criminals, right? Too. Like, like <laughs> that car with those guys. Yeah, we can make some bad seeds sometimes. in that one. Like, if there are more than three dudes in a mid '90s Chevy, they're up to no good. Yeah, and you know, there was one guy that looked, you know, like he might have some reservations about it. He was maybe of a, a nicer a stock. Uh, he, I guess, the getaway driver for this, you know. And what was he saying? It's like, well, you know, what if they come home, you know, like, I don't want anyone to get hurt or anything. And they're like, look, man, we got the plan all figured out. No time for you to get cold feet. You just stay here. Right. So that's all All he has to do is drive. Pretty easy job. Probably easy money too, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They've all got nicknames. I don't remember And, and the ringleader of the, these, these uh, dudes is none other than... I don't know the actor's name, but he plays Negan in The Jeffrey Walking Dead. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Is that right? That Jeffrey Dean right. Morgan, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Uh, yeah, Walking Dead. He's also, I think he plays Batman's dad in uh, Batman v Superman. Uh, he's actually in the newest season of The Boys. Um, he's in Watchmen. Yep, Watchmen. Yep. So I honestly and get Watch- Walker. I mean, he's Batman, Walker, Watchmen, The Boys. This guy's on it. Vigilante justice. So anyways, they uh, proceed with their break-in because um, the wealthy homeowners are away at a charity auction. And they read that in the newspaper. So uh, so they split up. Two guys uh, take downstairs. They disable the security system, but still smash through the door. So whatever. And then uh, one guy <laughs> goes upstairs. He's looking through jewelry stuff. Two guys are downstairs. And uh, the driver's like, oh, I don't know. I feel really nervous about this. It's kind of weird. He just like... I want to see what they're doing inside the house so I can learn. I guess this is professional development, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's yeah. an understudy. It's part yeah. of his performance plan. <laughs> yeah. He's like, plan. you know, yeah. next time I might not be the driver, so I should probably figure out... See what they're doing. ...the correct form yeah. for this. So the correct form is uh, smash and grab, and then when the homeowners show up accidentally, uh, smash, but don't grab. Yeah, you know? they took like a giant candlestick and just clocked those poor old, old people over the head. Yeah. And the edits were like cutting away right before it hit their skull it was brutal yeah, yeah right? it was pretty it yeah. was surprising yeah that jake he's a bad dude and that's at the stage before that happened though jake was like looking at a painting and then they do like a close-up <laughs> of uh jeffrey dean morgan's was mouth cutting? was he cutting the painting well, too? yeah they <laughs> do a close-up right, of his right, mouth and he opens his mouth and it's a razor blade he kept in his mouth under his tongue so that he could cut so the painting out he's just been cheeking a uh <laughs> 
<laughs> a razor blade the entire damn time. <laughs> he could talk pretty well too when he had it in there. Not bad, not bad. And why why did he just keep why did he keep it in his mouth? He wasn't in jail. Maybe old habits die hard, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, in, in the painting he went to cut out looks like something you'd buy at like Goodwill. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. like it a- comes in a frame that you've got at Savers. <laughs> 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 yeah. How much? What does that do to the, uh, the the value of the artwork when you cut it with a? It's got to be hard to knife. reframe it if it's like a lot smaller. So like he just basically was going to cut it out around the around the mat. Yeah, but even if it was and like roll P- it up Picasso's and, like, toilet paper, just a small slice of slice of that would be worth something you know i guess that would be but this didn't really look pretty high well, I, you know. I don't know are you into art you know that stuff no <laughs> okay all right right so it could have been just saying just saying okay yeah you're right i mean devil's advocate here look like thomas kincaid but you know it could it could have been worth something uh don't get me wrong the world needs jigsaw puzzles thank you thomas kincaid uh, ice cold ice cold okay uh well anyway yeah they they murder the two the two old people in dramatic fashion and the driver he sees it and he's like no <laughs> and then he runs to his car and jets off in the getaway the car getaway. <laughs> so so they're like oh man uh, the dude just left but but jeffrey dean morgan's character jake he just without missing beat, he's like oh just grab the dude's keys to his his beamer he just rolled up here with and we'll take the these guys car we're yeah good yeah easy as they speed off after the getaway driver uh, we see a nosy neighbor stare out of her window, and right. uh, you know she she sees three guys get into her neighbor's car and drive off in it. So she thinks there's something a little fishy about that, but she might not report it for a while. Yeah, did she call the cops? Because they they show like two or three establishing shots of the neighbor watching. Right. We'll talk timeline in a minute. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, just really not important. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. At the trailer park, the getaway driver is. <laughs> At his trailer and his girlfriend and their baby who's crying. The baby just does, well, does two things in this episode of Note. One is crying a lot. And he's like, oh, look, babe, you know, I did some bad stuff. And she's like, what? You just got out of jail. And he's like, "Uh, yeah, I know. But like. Diapers ain't cheap, babe. Baby's got (laughs) to, baby's got to eat. So we're going to steal from these old people. But yeah, they killed someone and they're coming back for me. And she's like, what? (laughs) He's like, before she can really react, he's like, oh, they're here now. (laughs) And then they're stabbing me. And he's, uh, and she basically escapes out the back window. With the baby. uh, With the baby, yeah. Crying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he's gone. Yeah, he he gets, he he gets it. I mean, you know, you you get in with the wrong people, right? Yeah, I mean. You know, you get in with one group of people, you might get stabbed in the trailer. You get in with another group of people, you might get stuck in a podcast for the rest of your life. So, you know. Be careful out there. Yeah, there's no yeah. way out. Yeah. There's no way out of this, is there? Uh, so she runs off and Jake's like, go get her. And the tech guy with the ponytail is like, I'm going to walk for like 10 feet and then, then I'm just going to give up. <laughs> but they, yeah. this is like the whole episode. They're caught up on this whole thing like, oh, well, she's, she's a witness. So we got to get her, right? Yeah, yeah. But like... <laughs> They're pretty caught up on this one person. Right, right. So she runs off and they're like, oh man, okay. Well, I guess we better get out of the trailer park and they drive off. And uh, yeah, so then cut to- Kroger. It could be a, pre- what, a price chopper? They got those down there? I don't know. Uh, shout, out to the, shout out to the Texas uh, listeners here. If anyone could ID the grocery store that Alex- that this scene was filmed at. So Alex is blissfully shopping like, like, oh, this is the best thing ever. I just worked a long day. Let me get some bacon, the kind that Walker likes. Right. And the eggs, the kind that Walker likes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's about it. Yeah. And then she'll, she's she's doing that. And then the young mother with her baby walks up and sees Alex and says, uh, kind of runs into her. And Alex is like, oh, what a cute baby. Right? She had the fever right away, man. Oh, yeah. Tell big you. time. She, she just came in with her. She's like a, a hawk coming down for a, a meal. Yep. And, and, <laughs> and the mom's like, oh, yes. Did she say, this is Max. It's Max. Do you want to hold him? And she's like, oh, yeah, sure. She's like, oh, great. Here he is. Uh, I got to go get something uh, four blocks away. See you later. Right, right. Yeah, she's like, I got to go uh, get some baby wipes. I, I forgot, forgot I got them. baby wipes. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's right. right. And Alex is like, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. you'll be right back. Yeah. Okay, I'll hold yeah. your baby. Yeah, that's great. That's not a big deal. And then she gone. She gone. And Alex is like wandering around the, the, uh, 
the girl she's still with like this weird shots of like she's it's like vertigo shots oh, of her yeah. Yeah. but it's yeah. like worrying shots of aisles from like you know 1999 grocery store like it gave me a little bit of nostalgia yeah, and she fell nostalgic. down she tripped yeah. over a fruit roll yeah. up and fell yeah. down with the baby it was <laughs> yeah i mean oh no it was dunkaroos yeah, dunkaroos. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't don't laugh the grocery store i go to still sells dungaroos no yes I, I did some research on this. I thought they were gone. Do you want me to get you some? Okay. Yeah, I want you to right. date what kind on of grocery store? Yeah. Maybe we'll, we'll talk about it on, offline. We don't want to give away too much information. It's true. We're not sponsored by this grocery store, and there's no way they even know what a podcast is. Their target clientele is Italian grandmothers. Oh, okay. Big okay. time. Right. Big time. From from Australia. Yeah. Apparently. If you if you <laughs> <laughs> Italian Australian grandmas. Because Dunger, Dunger is definitely from Australia. Uh, <laughs> Very Dunger, niche clientele. Dungers are what? They were like they were like kangaroo shaped teddy grams you could dip in frosting? Yeah, yeah that... there were straight big tubs of <laughs> okay. frosting. All right, yeah. all right. <laughs> Dentists love them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I will get you some dungaroos, Bob. Good Hell to know. Yeah. All right, that all right. Well, great. so pretty much, she calls Walker and the police all come, and they do a police report. And then there's a woman from uh, Child Services there, right? Yeah, and she's like, "What are you going to do with the baby?" She's like, "Well, we'll put him in a crib tonight, and then uh, put him in a f- with a foster home tomorrow." Does it yeah. happen that quickly? I don't know anything I mean, I about don't know. this, which is I, great. But I like, have, yeah, I haven't ditched a baby in a while, but. They're like, we're not going to try to find the parents at all. Like, we're just going to put them in foster care yeah, right. tomorrow. I don't know. Seem seemed a bit dramatic, and uh, you know, obviously uh, shocked Alex. And she had formed a connection with this baby, whom she learned his name was Max. Yeah, and uh, she's like, well, Walker, we got to keep him overnight. And Walker's like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> I thought we were having bacon and eggs here and counting fireflies. Right. Like It's like we finally got married. It's the ninth season and we're having this beautiful, blissful time. And you want to bring a baby into the equation here? Right. I want midnight bacon, baby. I know. I want to count some fireflies. And she's like, yeah, is that okay? And he's like, if you want to, sure. And she's like, I do. And Child Protective Services is like, mm, we're going to get you. Uh, we just got some forms to fill yeah. out and here. You're good. Right. It's kind of against the law, but we can fudge some papers and you can take yeah. the baby tonight. Yeah. So then there uh, there ensues a, a ridiculous montage uh, <laughs> in which uh, Walker and Alex give a baby a bath in his sink. Uh, they learn to change diapers. And, um, you know, this is maybe the one thing on earth that I'm better at, at than Walker. And that's changing diapers. Really? Yeah. Yep. And uh, Walker gets peed on. He sure does. It's the elephant, <laughs> elephant in the room here. And I'm pretty sure it goes in his mouth. <laughs> I rewound it. I'm like, he was definitely like spitting. Yeah. But he peed right in his face and it went in his mouth. Chalk so, this up for things I was not expecting to see in a Walker Texas Ranger episode. Walker getting peed in the mouth. I mean, his reflexes are great when it's feet, but when it's urine, well, maybe that's his kryptonite. Later on that evening, he's watching Alex uh, burp the baby, and he learns what burping does, which is, you know, relieving gas or whatnot. Yeah, how did he not? I don't know. Okay. Um, Maybe Walker has never also, burped. He's like reading He's like reading an <laughs> antique book, but you know that like that book has like a comic book inside it, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The it's way like he's a looking mar- at it. maroon uh, worn book that is not labeled. I was wondering what he was reading. <laughs> It's like a copy of War and Peace that he just opens up to the same spot. Um, but <laughs> The book actually reads to him. Uh, so, yeah, the next morning, you know, Walker gets a phone call and uh, he basically pawns the baby off on Alex for the day, I guess. Uh, it looks like Alex is getting like ready to go to work. And then Walker's like, ah, oh, here's the baby. I, I got to go check this out. And she's like, OK. So uh, basically, they get a call in to the, uh, the murder victim's home. If you remember, there was a double homicide of two wealthy people in Dallas oh, yeah. who were at a charity auction. Let's not forget that. Some people do later on in this episode. We'll, we'll pour one out um, for them. Yeah. Right now. Uh, but uh, so Walker gets called into that. And this is like apparently because the neighbor called it in. But it's like, did she call it in last night? And then it's just getting around to the Texas Rangers. That's kind of what I assume. Well, I mean, they were dead. <laughs> yeah, and they might want to just you know investigate later. The next ah, it's day. really late tonight, so okay. Uh, what Walker's change? He's busy. He's changing diapers. He can get to it tomorrow. It's true. It's you know? true. All right. So they basically go and um, don't learn much. So that's all good. <laughs> Back at the office, uh, Alex is basically left with figuring out childcare, and Walker's like, "Wait, you want to keep this baby?" And she's like, "Well, 
yeah, you know, only until we only until we find the mother. And he's like, well, how are you going to work when that happens? You know, like a like a real progressive male. And uh, she's like, oh, don't worry. You know, the lady at the Hope Center is going to take him for a couple days. And and that's Alex's Help Our People Excel yes, Foundation. Yes, the Hope Center. The, uh, yeah. the catch-all for helping people. It's also a um, absolute magnet for criminal activity, much like Walker's home. Uh, right. If anything bad goes down, it's usually either at the Hope Center, like the fire that was set there. It wasn't set on fire. Yeah, yeah. but it's kind of like an ant trap for bad guys. So that's why they're like, hey, we're just going to put this thing up there <laughs> right. and, you know, hopefully it will it will take bad guys away from other actual crimes. At any point in time, it's either under surveillance by criminals or law enforcement or sometimes both, uh, as we learn later. <laughs> but yeah, so she's like, well, the lady at the Hope Center is going to take the baby. And then I'm not working on any cases right now because I guess she finished up the night prior. Um, and she's like, yeah, so I can work like part-time. Let me do All that. Right. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I'm working late. I can't, I got to, I'm working late. Oh, actually, I don't have that much going no, I don't on. Have much going the next on. day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's because she worked late. She finished it. She got oh, it off her plate. I think there weren't enough fights in this episode because we're talking about <laughs> the contradiction of <laughs> Alex's workload. You're absolutely right. <laughs> But there is one coming up, isn't yeah. there? Oh. So basically, uh, they're figuring out child care, and Gage and Sydney are like, well, I guess we better go check out all the fences because these guys stole a lot of stuff from this house. And so we better check right. to see who's trying to pawn it off on you know the criminal marketplace. And so they've checked out a bunch of places, but they're going to, to Zeke's, and they're like, oh, yeah, this guy's the worst of the worst. He's so bad. If anyone's got anything criminal, like he's going to have it. And it's like, why didn't you go there first? He's the last <laughs> yeah. person that's to checking out. Um, so <laughs> it's like a classic Walker warehouse. Oh, I love this. Like they they come to a warehouse and it's like it's Gage and Sydney, no yeah. Walker and Turbet and Toe. So they're duo mission here, but no. um, they deliver, man, on this right. Well, I just love that they walk into the warehouse and just it's like a video game or something where like out of nowhere someone's just like ah and just jumps <laughs> at them and they punch him. He's gone. But yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the security at the yeah. warehouse. Yeah. Um, and then uh, they show up and they're like, scram, get them. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, there's basically, there's a lot of stunts involved. So like Sydney's like up on rafters or up on like shelving, jumping down on people. So good. Uh, Gage is like beating some guy up with a broom, basically. Oh, yeah. yeah. So do you notice he speared the guy with the broom and it made a punching sound. <laughs> <laughs> and then he twirls it like Donatello, man. It was oh, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sick. Yeah. He's pretty good with a bow staff. So basically, they take Zeke into custody because, you know, he basically sicked everyone on them. And uh, they're trying to shake him down. He's like, look, man, I just know this guy, Jake, he's bringing in all the stuff. And they're like, all right, well, we're going to have a sting operation. He's like, are you serious? And they're like, yeah, that's basically it. Back at home, uh, yeah, Alex, they, so, having yeah. been given the okay on uh, keeping the baby for a long time, is is clearly in uh, full on nesting mode. Oh yeah, she's got baby fever. Oh for sure. <laughs> she's like settling in. She's like, oh, I got the crib, I got the the swing, and I got all this other stuff. And Walker's like, what is going on? Like he's like, I'm beginning to think like you're gonna keep this baby. And she's like, no, 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 no. Just to slow it down here, real quick. No, this baby, guys. Do you know who this baby is? No, are you going to drop something on us? This baby is somebody we have talked about on this podcast before. Haley Joel Osman. No. Nope. Uh, I don't know. This baby is none other than Max Norris. Who really? Who goes by the same name. And a few years ago was on the Jonas Brothers reality TV show Claim the Fame, where other celebrities, relatives, try to guess what celebrity you're related to. And apparently Max cheated oh. and was booted off claim to fame. And uh, there he is there right he there. Is. Wow. There's the baby. So we've seen him as a baby. We didn't know at the time he was actually in a Walker episode, one of the best Walker episodes we've seen thus far, right? We'll wait for the rating on that one. But yeah, so uh, shout out to Max Norris making a, a, he was excellent crier in this episode and, you know, and uh, who knew? Wow. So, so that was Chuck Norris's actual grandchild. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, interesting. Yeah, so just putting that onto wow. the record, and he went by his actual name, Max. Thanks for doing the deep dive. That's interesting. Okay. So, okay, they, they're going to set a sting in motion, so if anyone comes to fence any more of the stuff from uh, Jake's crew, Zeke's going to rat them out. And so back at home, Alex is nesting. She's got all this baby stuff, and Walker's like, man, I don't know what, what what's going to happen to this. But the next morning, 
they enter the courthouse and the press is all there for some reason. And this is apparently front page news that a child was was abandoned and that Alex is watching the baby. Not the fact that there was a double homicide of two <laughs> extremely wealthy no. people who were philanthropists in the Dallas area. No mention of this whatsoever. It's more, what about the baby? Are you going to find the baby's mother? So yeah, that's basically a plot device to get information about this baby and that it's in the custody of um, Walker and Alex and that it'll be at the Hope Center. Right. And they put that all on TV. It's like... Yeah, just in case anyone who wanted this information, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan watching the TV in your your <laughs> bad guy hotel room. Yeah, very strange. Um, meanwhile, uh, Trevett and Walker, they get a lead about the baby's mother from the closed circuit TV. Someone says it looks like the lady who moved into the trailer down the street from her. Anyways, they investigate it, and lo and behold, there's a dead body in that trailer. Yeah, he gone. And that's the uh, getaway driver who got knifed. Yeah. And also the car in the driveway is the getaway car that the, the neighbor reported. So A lot the, of moving pieces here. Yeah, it's yeah, all adding but up, though. It's all come together at this point. Uh, meanwhile, the goons are watching the news, all sitting on like the same bed in a hotel. Um, it's like, why are you guys all just hanging out together at this point? Like, I don't get it. They all just got out of prison, man. They didn't have nowhere else to go. I guess. They got each other. That's beautiful. So anyways, they watch the news and of course they see the one segment like this always happens on Walker, right? This is a total trope where like this is not modern day where you can like find anything again. You have to be watching at the right time and unmuted as well. They're like, hey, hey, turn that up. Right. But at the same time, back (laughs) in the day, they probably only had a few channels on most TVs and you are more apt to see just that. That said, though, their lean in segments must have been really, really long because it's always like they're like, turn. Hey, turn that up. Turn that up. And all the details are there. They haven't gone through any of the important stuff till the end. Jake's like, you go to the Hope Center and you you find that that one witness and killer. And, you know, he doesn't say make sure there aren't any other witnesses, which uh, that's a detail he missed out on. Um and he's like, says the other guy, the dude with the mustache, he's like, hey, you go try to fence this other stuff off. We got another job coming up. That and I'm just going to stay too. here. I think he's been in some other Walker episodes, that guy. <laughs> yeah. He looked very familiar. But I think so. The mustache. The mustache. Guy. Yeah. Yep. He goes by Corky in this episode. So, yeah, they've, they've got all these, all these plans set up. And um, meanwhile, we see this odd scene of the mother. And she's like in the loudest alley possible. She seems to have found the one place where every crime is being committed at once. (laughs) Crime alley. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) And she's like, okay, well, I'm just going to stay here and... um, Lean against this wall and and, clasp my hands. And pray out loud. And pray, and the shot is going to fade into the burning sun. Yeah. Yeah. Was that the prayer being answered, or was that just a transition? I couldn't tell. That's not for us to know. Okay. So the next morning, uh, Walker and the baby, you know, they don't know anything about this baby, but they're trying solids. So, you know, as that never goes well, and uh, the baby's flinging apricot baby food everywhere, and Walker's covered in baby food, and Alex is like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. And she's like, oh, thanks so much for taking, for feeding the baby last night. Like, I don't know what's come over me. I'm, <laughs> it's probably the flu. Wrote in my note. Preggers. Please yeah. no, please no. In <laughs> fact, I was waiting for the episode to end and like say, please don't, please don't. Anyways, Alex has <clears throat> the flu, and possibly, and uh, so she's gonna go get checked out from the doctor. And uh, Walker's gonna, um, it's gonna go do some detective work. So yeah, back at the office, they look into uh, now that they know the name of the um, of the guy who was dead in the trailer. They're able to find out who his cellmates were, and they're like, oh man, it's a real bad list of guys. They figure out who Jake is. They ID Corky, um, you know, and they're like, okay, well, now we have some some faces to go with with the suspects, right? So uh, Gage and Sydney, they go stake out at the fences place, and uh, they're all like, okay, well, wait, wait, wait. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? And then someone shows up at the fences place, and what do they say? That's Corky Randall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. And uh, the fence is a really bad actor. So he's like trying to signal to the Rangers. And in the midst of doing that, he's seen by Corky, who drops all the stuff. And instead of going to his car, just books it. Yeah. Corky 
I'm not going to say he's the most athletic built. No. But man, he puts. He he's puts, got a hustle. He's got yeah. some yeah. serious yeah. hustle. He's got get up and so, go. So, like, Gage has. He's like, all right, I'm going to go on foot. Sydney, you drive around to the back around of this, which always works. They always do this. It always works. Well, they're a team. They know what's up. Yeah. They're like, there's only one way out. So, you drive around to that spot. I'll chase him there. Yeah. And um, Gage is like jumping around. Like yeah, he's crazy, jumping right? over forklifts. He's doing all this other stuff. Corky's just sort of like, you know. A steady, steady chug. Every time he like runs by the the camera, you hear like, <gasps> <laughs> and that was real. They didn't have to punch that in. So, anyways, he comes around and they go for fences, go over a railroad bridge. They go all, all of this. I mean, I counted this as a chase. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. for sure. But uh, you know, they basically corner him, and he's about to. Uh, run away again between the two rangers and uh, he runs into the road and there's some serious editing that goes on here that I thought you guys would appreciate it, it's um they made it look like he got hit by a truck oh Tr- he they did. tried to make it look like <laughs> kind of kind of it, it was pretty good it was pretty good he did it, and it was funny because like he jumped a fence like a chain link fence and I'm like how is this guy gonna jump a chain link fence right Corky dude Corky's got the hustle and then Gage, right behind him, jumps the same fence, and they're running out through the alley, and uh, Corky runs out in the middle of the road, and before he realizes it, there's a Mack truck coming, and it goes, and, and, he turns around, <laughs> and it, it must have been like a wide-angle lens, right? I mean, that shot was magic. I don't know what it was, but it was just, it's like, what just yeah, happened? It's like he turns around, and it looks like the truck's right on him, and then we hear, like, a, uh, and then, yeah. then like, the next shot, the truck is gone, and he's just lying on the ground, like, unscathed, right? They didn't even try to apply makeup on him. They're just like, yeah. yeah he was just laying there. It wasn't. Yeah. And, well, he wasn't even laying there. He kind of, like, he had his, his same reaction was, like, the reaction the guys have, when, like, when they're shot in the show, right? Yeah. Like, he's sort of, like, like, uh, like sort of grimaced, shook, and then fell to the ground. Yeah. Right. So he <laughs> might like, have been, just, still been alive, actually. You were just crushed by a Mack truck, but all right. They cool. said he was dead, but he might have still been alive. Right? I think so. Corky, Corky, we hope we He's hope spry. Corky pulls through. He's spry, that Corky. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's the mustache. <laughs> That's where he gets his power. Oh. Um, meanwhile, the other guy with the ponytail is uh, sweating his face off in his car. Uh, at the Hope Center. The other bad guy that Jeffrey Dean Morgan's character sent out to kill the mom because she was a witness. Yeah. And he's sent out to the Hope Center to wait for the mom to show up. And uh, as he's waiting, he sees Alex show up and he's like, okay. And then like five seconds later, the mom shows up and he's like, oh, okay. Right. Easy. He's watching yeah. her. until So, so yeah. she kind of, Alex like coaxes her onto the front porch of the Hope House and uh, she's like oh hold on and she goes and gets the baby Max and they're all out on the front porch and this degenerate bad guy this guy <laughs> looks so messed out didn't he it's like sweat all over his face he was the, he was like, the creepiest one was when he was sitting in the car every time? Yeah. yeah I noticed I love the sweat and I was like <laughs> appreciate it keeping that and in. he comes out and he just lays up this pistol it gets him in the sights of this pistol right again like you're doing all of this to kill the one person who you think, you're not even sure, but you think witnessed you murder somebody. That's it. Yeah. You don't even know. And you're, you're going to stand in broad daylight in the public with a gun to shoot down this one person in front of a bunch of other people and drive off. I don't understand this. And at this point, they've already been made. Well, they know they've been made. I don't know what they're, what they're I don't gonna know, get but he, they just really don't like Max. I guess. But, yeah. yeah. So he's about to shoot her down when, um, as we said before, the Hope House is constantly under surveillance by one or multiple parties. In this case, the Texas Rangers have also been watching Hope House, and they speed in and have a shootout with this guy. Yeah, Walker and Trevette this time yeah. get some action finally in yeah. this episode, besides getting peed on. Right, which is, I mean, that's where the most action is. Really. Well, so, to some people, that would be. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's a personal preference. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. I mean, I prefer bacon and eggs, but, you know. <laughs> At midnight. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I like counting fireflies. Nice. Good choice. That's a good choice. Good choice. Um, so, anyways, this guy, he's like in a shootout with Walker and Alex, and the mom tries to run off, and he's like, oh, okay, this is my chance. I'm just going to stand up in the open and square up a shot against her. And before he can get his shot off, uh, Walker just shoots him, like, in the chest. He gone. It, he can't testify either. Yeah. No. Oh. They, don't, they don't seem very torn up about it. I mean, Mack Gage truck. and Sydney seemed upset about the truck, but yeah. Walker's like, yeah, I just killed that dude, but whatever. 
Especially in front of the Hope House. Well, he's going to kill his his wife and uh, their, uh, you know, temporary baby. Walker's like, man, this is like the <laughs> fifth person I've killed in front of Hope House. Yeah, there's something bad at Juju. Yeah, yeah. We've got to get a new yeah. location. <laughs> <laughs> change, up with that hope change the address at the Hope House. So that guy's gone, and the mother ran away. But Walker looks through the guy's car and then finds a napkin from a hotel. And it was actually Trevette who found that napkin. He deserves the credit, Evan. Trevette, he's going through the, the bad guy's car. He finds this napkin. And it's got like a hotel address on it and uh, gives it to Walker. And they they say, hey, Gage and Sydney, go check this place out because we're old and we just want to show up in a few scenes. Yeah, that, that tracks. Yeah. So they apparently <laughs> check out the hotel, but no one's there. And uh, they're like, well, it's just Jake. And Walker's like, he'll find some more people. And this might be my favorite scene when he does find some more people, right? Oh, the guy says the fresh batch of cons if right, off the bu- bu- exactly. right off the bus. <laughs> he's literally like, yeah, yeah, Jeffrey D. Morgan's character. He's He's lost all three of his bad guys. And he's like. Well, I guess I'll just wait at the Greyhound station for the next batch of bad guys to come out. <laughs> <laughs> the new class. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there was one guy that was like an albino. Yeah. yeah was... <laughs> it takes all types. Yeah. Right. Right. And the ringleader from those is like, what am I going to do? And he's like, okay, well, the other three guys, they're going to go uh, rob <laughs> this place. But you and me, we got something special. And again, that special thing is killing the mother of Max. At this point, dude, you've been made. They know who you are. Everyone else is dead. You don't need to track this person down. You don't need to like risk it by, I don't know, say like going to the house of a Texas Ranger and, you know, trying to kill people. Especially Walker because, you know, anyone in prison knows Walker and they know how much of a formidable force he is. So anyways, the Rangers at the hotel, they found a newspaper with, uh, with an auction circled on it. And it said, again, in this one, that these two wealthy people were going to be at the auction. So, like, oh, maybe that's how they're figuring out whose house to hit up. It's like, "Mm, yeah, I think so. So, they foil this uh, robbery in broad daylight. It's the whole whole Ranger crew. Walker, Trivette, Sydney, and Gage. And uh, I don't know. They basically take out these three guys. I thought that um, Sydney was going to kick a dude into a pool. But it, maybe they didn't get permission to use the pool from the homeowner. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So they kicked him into a pond instead. Well, no, that, that was that Gage. Was Gage. Yeah. But the best part... All right, so there were some really good moves in this, and yeah. they all came from Gage and Sydney. Now, they are... Uh, it's season nine. It, that's it, how it plays She was out. Like, twirling around, jumping over fences. She jumped over a fence, landed on a uh, trampoline. Oh, she it's yeah, a trampoline. Yeah. Yeah. And did a flip and kicked a guy in the face all in one motion. It was stuff no, like that. It was, it was not insane. a one clip though. If you see her land on the trampoline, she lands awkwardly, but they cut it again to, to another one where she's like coming off the trampoline. Who cares? That was great. It was still. I <laughs> it mean, it's great. creative. It was amazing. I like it. And then they had like Gage. They're like, just dude, jump around like the Hulk, and then climb a tree, <laughs> jump off a tree, and, and jump off a tree, and we're gonna uh, the clip to another cut of you just diving, hitting a guy. And then uh, jump not, punch, yeah, yeah, jump punching him into a lake. It was so cartoonish and so bombastic that it was amazing. And this is why I like Walker Texas Ranger. That fight scene was a blast. Uh, I mean, you know, for those of you looking to maybe landscape your yard or you know figure out a way to arrange things in your yard, I would definitely think about it from the perspective of what if Texas Rangers were chasing criminals through your yard? Maybe make it easier for the Texas Rangers, like. Should the trampoline be there? Yeah, it should. Yeah. You know, do you want to prune the lower branches of that live oak? How would a Texas Ranger get up into that tree to tackle someone? Yeah. Keep the lower branches. Yeah. Maybe you know? a spare set of nunchucks in the backyard just hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, should you put a fence around your pool? No. Should you put a fence around the pond? Definitely not. You got to kick someone in there. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, there are yeah. considerations to make. And I think people should all do that. But uh, yeah, props to the choreography on the scenes because it was it was a blast. That was a blast. Over very quickly though, and there's no Jake. So they're like, man, where the heck is Jake? I don't know where Jake is. <gasps> Cut to Alex at Walker's Ranch. <laughs> and uh, she's with Max and she's hanging out in Walker's cabin there. And uh, we hear a, a tussle outside and it's the mother of Max had shown up and uh she's like oh uh 
the the police officer like you can't go in there we've been told not to let anybody and alex comes out caesar says oh officer it's okay and the moment you see that police officer you're like dude it's gone right yeah, he's gone yeah, i guess yeah. the other question is how did she get there there's no uber yeah there's yeah. no cab well, like well it's she knew walk. walker she knew walker was um watching her so she you can look up people's numbers and addresses in the phone book it's like the hope house like how are people finding Walker's house in the first place? Do you do you think Walker's afraid? He's going to put his his uh, address and phone number in the phone book. He's it's, like, "Come at me, bro." It's true. That's he often like. he often uses his home as bait. Actually, but this time maybe he didn't think about that. But again, how did this woman get there? There's like she just walked there. She might have taken know. a cab. Right. Expensive ride. Yeah, especially <laughs> someone who's kind of down on their luck. Yeah, it, it, it's questionable. But but they uh, they did have some one at least one police officer staked out there, so they did think about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, she spills her guts to uh, to Alex about you know the tough time she's been in, and Alex is like, "Well, why didn't you guys talk to your parents?" And she's like, "Well, when I was hooking up with a criminal, my parents uh, disowned me." Right. They said it would only lead to him getting stabbed after trying to do a robbery job. In yeah. a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as that's happening, Alex is like, well, I mean, it's great that you told that to me, but I need you to tell that to the man in my life. So I'm going to call Walker right now. And she picks up the phone, turns it on and uh, no signal. Ooh. And mm. good, good on her for being like. Oh, this has happened to me before. Right. This means the I've bad learned. guys have cut the line yep. and they're going to come in. I've learned from my mistakes. So she looks out the window. She's like, I hate to do this to you at the same time, like for the second time in the span of a week, but they're coming. We got to go. Right. And uh, she sees the police officer splayed out on the ground. And two guys coming in. Right. Um, they go out the back door and, uh, you know, Jeffrey D. Morgan's directing the other lackey fresh off the prison bus to go look for them. And they're going around and, and Alex, the baby Max and, and the mom hiding their barn out there. Right. Yeah. Alex is like, well, we got to go to the barn. And they're like, well, they're not in the house. Maybe they're in the barn. Mm. Okay, yeah, cool. You yeah. bought yourself 10 seconds. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the baby's like crying, right? Did they not hear the baby crying? Well, you can only hear it if you're a mother. I heard it the entire time, so. So they're in the barn and uh, hiding behind, not really hiding, this is air quotes hiding. And Alex is like, oh, I gotta go pee, I'll see ya. And right, she, <laughs> she right. takes off. And then the bad guys come in and they're like, well, we see you now. Yeah, they see the you. mother and Max, and uh, they're about to shoot them, and Alex comes up with a shovel and splays them out? Or what happens? Yeah, she comes in, uh, attacks them with a shovel, and, um, you know, she hits one guy down, but then gets uh, sucker punched in the face. So <laughs> God. Just out. Yeah. And uh, she's about to get shot when a... Uh, <laughs> Avenger of the Night. Clearly, hmm. a clearly a stunt double comes flying. Through. Yeah, that's, that one was pretty it's, obvious. I was like, man, that face is that's just not even close. Yeah. So yeah. Walker, quote unquote, jumps through the window of the barn <laughs> and uh, breaks through it, and immediately we're we're like Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Walker fighting. Here we go. No, Walker just shoots both the bad guys, and they're dead. Yeah, he yeah. does a couple tumbles between the shooting, but yeah, he shoots both. There, of them. Yep, there was. Yeah, he just shot people in this episode. He didn't fight at all. Chuck no. Norris's thing. No. It's character development. He's like, well, 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 why throw punches when I can just take these guys out? You just kill them. Yeah. yeah. So that's the end of the episode, right, guys? Nothing else? No, no, no. Uh, oh, oh really? I thought they I thought they tied up there, yeah. 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 So <laughs> It would have been nice if they just headed back to see these. You know, yeah. That's, that's what I was hoping yeah. for. But. Right. Yep. Now they, they got to wrap this whole thing up, and uh, so do we with this podcast. And um, the mother is, like, talking to Walker and Alex and just desperate. She's like, well... You guys love the baby, right? Why, why don't you keep him? Why, why don't you keep him? They're like, no, 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 no. You, yeah. you take him. She's like, well, I don't really have a job. And they're like, we could maybe help you with that. And I'm like, are they going to set her up with like a like an internship or like a clerk like, or something like you that? Can, you can, as long as you work at the Hope House. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. Like that's what I thought it was going to be. But this car rolls up and these two people come out and it's like her parents. She's like, mom, dad. And they're like, well, now that you're now that your boyfriend's dead, we're back. And <laughs> she's like, and the dad's like, is that Max? Is that my grandson? <laughs> she's like, yeah. And he's like, can I hold him? <laughs> he said it was so weird. It's like, yeah, okay, good to see you too. Right. Yeah. And then the mom is like, I guess I'll hug you. And then the the child protective services officers like standing on the porch, and she's like, ah. 
I wish they all ended like that. And it's like, really? The kid's dad just got killed. The mother was almost murdered like three times. And she abandoned the kid with someone she didn't know at a grocery <laughs> store. Right, like, and they're just going to be like, oh, it's, she's probably right, fine. Like, how bad is your typical case? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, we don't know. But yeah, regardless. And so, you know, I, I was like, okay, this is it. And, and all the while, they're playing this terrible song. Oh, this this song is brutal. The cheese level was cheddar up when this came on. Extra sharp. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. We are definitely going to be cutting a version of this track and uh, adding it to the end of this podcast. Uh, You can feel free to skip the end of the podcast just as we wish we could have skipped the next five seconds of this episode of what we're about to talk about it's beautiful just beautiful okay all right so speaking Gorgeous. of which that uh, music keeps playing and then we pan back to walker and alex on the porch it's a little too early to be looking for the fireflies but yeah i mean they're basically clearly shell-shocked you know they're they're mourning the loss of max you know they just had a child in their life and now the child is gone and you know it's like that's a hurdle they have to grapple with and um, then you hear the phone ring. And at this point, you know, you got to think they've got to be on speed dial with the local telephone company, right? Because like the lines were just cut hours before. Oh, yeah. Good point. Oh, right. 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 Yeah. It's like, yeah, it wasn't Walker a cell probably phone. went out and fixed it himself. Yeah, yeah. he's like, oh, I was a lineman at one point in time. Yeah, th- th- this, wasn't, this wasn't a cell phone. This is kind of like before. Oh, it was a they, landline. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so it's a phone call and Alice comes back out. She's like, oh, it's the doctor about the blood tests he took a while back. And uh, Walker's like, oh, you, you got the flu? And she's like, I sure do. <laughs> the baby flu. <laughs> oh. And he's like, what? <laughs> and Walker's all like, what? And she's like, I'm pregnant. And he's like, wow. That's, that's all I could think of. That was, that was the reaction was, was Wow. Wow. <laughs> and then it fades to the credits playing that music, and then they have baby giggling baby over Baby laughter at the oh. end. Yep. Uh, oh. as, the, as the kids say, absolute cringe. <laughs> Super cringe. <laughs> Super <yeah>. cringe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ugh, gross. Oh, man. <laughs> the uh, a- absolute uh, kick to the nuts at the end of that episode. <laughs> like, what the heck? It was rough. Whew. All right. Well, that about sums up that episode. When we come back, it's going to be time for us to each rate Child of Hope on a scale of 0 to 10, boots to the face, resulting in our patented Roundhouse Roulette episode ranking, complete results of which are available on our website, roundhouseroulette.com. Don't go away. Slow down, Bob. Kill those headlights. Yeah, man. Are you trying to get us caught? Sorry, guys. I'm feeling a little nervous about this. Sick to my stomach, actually. (laughs) What for, man? We're just trying to deliver the light of Walker, Texas Ranger to the world. By breaking into people's homes while they're away and subscribing them to our podcast? Yeah, man. You got any better ideas? What if we just ask our listeners to share the pod with a friend or leave us a kind review on Apple Podcasts? You know, that may truly help other Walkerites find this podcast. And if they're feeling extra generous, they might could join us on Patreon or pick up a vintage action figure at roundhouseroulette.com. Yeah, let's do that instead. All right, let's get out of here. Yellow. Man, he's going to blow our cover and we're just about to leave. Uh, I guess I wasn't feeling sick because we were going to break into people's homes. I've I've got a case of the baby flu. Uh, uh, congratulations, uh, man. Yeah. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think about this one? So... One of the reasons we got into this podcast was we used to watch Walker in college after our gigs. Bob and I, with our buddy Chad Gosselin, uh, we'd get back from gigs late night at midnight, make some bacon, and uh, go back to the dorm, have some PBR, and, and watch Walker. And our buddy Chad was in, in Nashville with his band, and we played a show, and we got back late at night, and he's like, man, we got to watch some Walker. I said, dude, I can only watch ones that or either on the docket or I've watched for the podcast because I'm trying to stay fresh. So we watched this one 
and I've got their reviews. I'm going to play for you right now. Okay, it's 2.18 a.m. I'm sitting here with the big lonesome after they rocked D's Lounge in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, we just watched, what was it, Child of Faith? Oh, no, we just watched Child of Hope. Season 9, Episode 9, Walker, Texas Ranger. (laughs) I mean, the outro song was a banger. I mean, this might be one of the best episodes of Walker I've ever seen. But what do you guys think? Chad? It's pretty good, man. Really? Um, You you don't have to lie. lie. (laughs) No, it, it it was a sleepier episode, I would say. What was your favorite part of the episode? The song. (laughs) <laughs> the outro song the was outro pretty great. Song. Yeah, that piano ballad. Maybe when they punched the teddy bear out of that the That was frame. pretty good. That was pretty yeah, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk yeah, about that. I mean, we're getting there. That's probably my something. All right. Andy, what do you got, man? What were some of your favorite moments from that? Hey, the, the highlights were Walker exploding into the barn and, <laughs> and shooting <laughs> Jeffrey Dean Morgan yeah, yeah, instead so. of hitting him. That's true, yeah. He, he, he got a little old this last season, you know, he didn't want to fight it out. So, But he did, or his stunt double at least burst at that window. Right, so that, that was pretty epic. Those are probably the highlights. Um, you know, we usually give it uh, zero to ten boots to the face. What do you guys give this one? Um, uh, 3.4. 3.4. That's yeah. the Massachusetts dog. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I'm going with the white buffalo. It's probably a 10, right? Well, we, we haven't gotten there. We're praying that the roulette wheel gets the white buffalo. And we've had some people write in. Is there a perfect 10? Um, mean, you'll have to. You don't listen to the roundhouse roulette, Chad? <laughs> yeah. right, let's get back to this. Is it, yeah. Uh-huh. Andy, in my, from my memory, yes, white buffalo would be a 10. So compared to that. What about Thunderhawk? I will give this a <laughs> oh, oh. solid 6.1. Okay, a 6.1. That's that's pretty generous. That's very generous. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, you know. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll take that into consideration when we uh, record the next podcast. I'll share this with the boys. And then immediately after that bomb, Chad was like, we, we got to watch one more. So then we watched... The Lynn Sisters episode. I've got a quick follow up with Andy after because I was like, dude, you know, we need to watch a good episode so you can actually have an actual basis on how to rate that okay. six. So here's a quick little Andy update. All right. So, Andy, that was kind of a lame review you gave. Uh, I didn't want to say anything, but we just watched the episode, The Lynn Sisters, which I think I actually gave this episode a 10. Because it dealt with the music industry. I used to work in CD manufacturing. Walker fought a guy with a sword. You know, <laughs> it's probably not a 10, but for me personally, it is. Yeah. You need close. to go back and rate the one where Walker got <laughs> peed on by a baby. What's your number on that one? I'm still sticking with 3.4. I'm going to call it a 3. Three. Wow. Okay. All right. I think that that's fair. Chad had the 3.4. He's sticking with it. Um, but yeah, uh, just a little reference point there, uh, re- revising that back to the show. Okay. So thank you, big lonesome for weighing in. Um, yeah, go check them out. They have a new album out modern trauma. And if you need a little more trauma in your life, listen to their music or watch this episode. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Although that's not super modern. <laughs> <laughs> it's retro trauma <laughs> very much so okay so i think i'm going first here i gotta say the things that brought it up for me were were the fighting uh gage and sydney were off the chain unleashed in their fights uh jeffrey d morgan was pretty good he was menacing um he did literally punch a teddy bear out of the frame i can't believe we forgot to talk about that but he's walking through the house and uh, like you see a teddy bear in the foreground and, and as he walks by he just slaps it to the ground i mean that's bad guy material yeah yeah and the outro song was so cheesy that i can't get it out of my head um so i'm gonna give this one a two well you stole my thunder i had two <laughs> down 
pretty much from the get go in this episode. <laughs> and that the ending was a roller coaster, but none of it was very entertaining. And it was a slow coaster. The baby thing and the music. We didn't talk much about the music in the episode. Uh, it was kind of it was cheesy. When they had like baby scenes, though, that music was super goofy and like piano. Like, oh yeah, it was like the oh, changing of the, the Andy diaper Griffith show. Like, what <laughs> am I watching here? Like the waterworks uh, diaper. F- yeah, fiasco. Yeah, that was. Uh, um, but yeah, during those scenes, I was really like, "What, no, what yeah. are we? What are we doing? Come what, on, yeah. why are we? Yeah, watching this uh, show? There at isn't all? enough beer for this this podcast." Yeah, Walker, did he throw a punch? No, no. Any roundhouse kicks? No. Yeah, what are the stats on this one, Evan? Stats on this one, uh, technically one chase. Although on our website we, we call it vehicle chase, so I don't know if I should actually count that. Well, it's like so. A human I, no, okay, it, it ended with a vehicle. We'll put this up for a vote. Guy got flattened in our, in our next staff meeting. Mm. Yeah, yeah, there was okay. a vehicle involved. Mm. So. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> yeah, very much so. <laughs> okay, so one chase, two fights, no explosions, no roundhouse kicks. So a combined score of the four stats of um, uh, three. Yeah, not not the best. And Walker didn't really do any of that stuff. He did change a diaper though. Okay, so you're going two. Yeah, it wasn't good. No. <laughs> Go figure. All right. <laughs> so I'm on our stats page. I've only given a one to an episode three times. That was for Soldiers of Hate, which featured uh, imagery from the Holocaust. Division Street, which had the perhaps God, perhaps no. the the greatest uh, um, letdown of a cameo from a. A yeah, celebrity yeah. Ever. Hulk Hogan with he just gets clocked while he's reading a newspaper and drinking a coffee <laughs> and then uh, Saving Grace which um, the one where the girl's in physical therapy or something at the end is Purple that Hospital Room yeah one of those episodes yeah, yeah just a real clunker the combined stats uh, just of three there are very few episodes that have that low a number uh, this episode was awful uh, <laughs> I'm co- you got I'm, me rethinking my two. I'm <laughs> contemplating giving it a one because there is like no Walker action except him, Steven Seagaling, uh, somersaulting with a gun and shooting two dudes. Um, his action is like getting peed on by a baby, feeding a baby food, and putting together a baby swing. He jumped through a window. Yeah, he did at the end. He shot and killed at least three people okay i can't give it a zero but i want to give this episode a one it is it is bad <laughs> wow all right well what does that yeah. what does that give us that gives this episode a rating of 1.666 boots to the face ah! matched only by division street okay the whole wow. Hogan episode. Okay. <laughs> checks out yeah. Regardless of how you feel about this episode, I think we can all agree that Walker should probably get his address delisted. But uh, please let us know what you think on social media or by emailing us at roundhouseroulette at gmail.com. When we come back, we're going to spin that roulette wheel and select our next episode. All right. Welcome back. You ready to spin that wheel, Bob? I am. Let's do this. <laughs> Power oh, Angels. No. It was like yes. a Power Rangers? Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Power Angels. All right. What do you guys think this one's actually about before Adam grabs the synopsis? Season was it? Seven? Seven. Power Angels. I have is no that, idea. Is that, the season with, is that the one with Trent and Carlos? They, they Were have, they season seven? Uh, yeah. They should be in there. It's either like wrestling or or about a lineman. Thoughts? A lineman? Like, you know, like like the power guy, like someone on oh, the I power lines. Like a football player. Oh no! <laughs> well, it could be football Defensive too. Defensive lineman. I bet it's pro wrestling. It's always wrestling. All right, Power Angels. Walker and Trevette try to stop a minister's son from stealing the proceeds from his father's telethon. Huh? Hmm. No. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't sound too interesting, but we'll, we'll no. see. You know, there might be more to it. There usually is. Yeah. Sometimes not, though, as yeah, we just yeah. saw this yeah. week. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, if you guys want to join us on the next telethon, <laughs> <laughs> be sure to tune in. Yeah. It'll be a blast. Exactly. And, uh, you know, be sure to tune in next time when we give you our thoughts on Season 7, Episode 21, Power Angels. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and be sure to, uh, you know, write us a little review on Apple Podcasts. Help us out. Yeah, even if you've written one before, we'll take another one. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for listening, and until next time, may may the eyes of the ranger. ranger.
be upon you. When you're in Texas, look behind you. Oh, cause that's where the ranger's gonna be. Life.